Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Strat Gamer here, providing you with a new episode of Anno 1800 today. We are back with a complete guide series, and today we're going to talk about coffee and chocolate, as you can see on the screen. Why those two together? Well, first of all, both of these resources are I would say end game resources that are need for your investors and also as we'll see they are very interrelated you can produce one as a byproduct of the other and vice versa you can use the same raw materials basically for both um, so very interesting to to look at them both together like the previous episode we are going to look at you know a quick overview of what it is all the production chains that are using it the production ratios that you want to use, the layouts, the department that you may want to be using, um, the museums and botanical sets that are important to know, and last but not least, what are my items and specialties that I suggest for both. So stay tuned, don't hesitate also to use the chapter uh, functionality of uh, YouTube that you can see at the bottom because I've uh, separated the video into all of those categories Okay, let's dive in and Let's start By reviewing very quickly what um, these two buildings are these two resources are so coffee that you can see here is being produced um, for many tiers, it's a basic need for many tiers, but it also produces heat for the Arctic. While chocolate, on the other side, you can see here, is actually only needed for investors. I've also posted in the description below. Sorry about that. I've also posted in the description below the wiki links for both those resources. Don't this day to check it out. Um, in these wiki pages, you can see, for example, how many of each resource is needed to feed you know, 10, um, one investor house, 10 investor house, etc. Those kind of things that can be quite useful. Now, I think what's really important and where we definitely need to start is how do you get those resources and let's start first with um, the basic ways right the, the sort of classic way to get it so the classic way to get coffee is in the new world where we are now um, where you can see this production chain that goes from coffee plantation which creates coffee beans to the coffee roaster which creates coffee that's sort of the normal way now with land of lions and the introduction of the research institute we are also able to build coffee in the old world uh, let me show you that quickly so this is sort of the normal way and if you go to the end you can see these three here which you develop in again in the research issue i'll show you very quickly and you can see the advanced coffee roaster and this one is in the new old world goes from grain to malt house to produce malt to the coffee and interestingly this one you can boost with electricity or it actually requires electricity um, so that's a key difference because you don't have electricity in the old world um, let me just quickly show you my research institute I am one of the scholars uh, sorry let me just take that so you go to measure discoveries in production methodologies old world coffee products so this is how you get it now let's go back to the old new world there's also other ways to get uh, coffee and it's via what I would call byproduct. Um, and that means we need items for that. So let's take a quick look. I uh, don't know where they are. So just check that. You have first the cola mola, wola machine. And in this one, you can put it on your champagne cellars, your rum distillery, and advanced rum distillery. So quite a uh, a few different elements and that will give you coffee 110 110 cycle one every 10 cycle so that's not a lot to be honest um, but still can be quite useful especially at the beginning if you're producing a lot of rum then you're getting your coffee sort of for free with that item 
The second item to get some coffee yield, let's say for free, is the quality chocolate. Chocolatier, quality chocolatier, as you can see here, that I'm actually using on this island. Um, and it, here it's a lot quicker, it's one every three cycle. Uh, it's in your chocolate factory, so that's what I said at the beginning, chocolate and coffee quite linked. On top of that, this item is quite useful because instead of sugar, it will process coffee beans. So once again, sort of very linked between coffee and chocolate. So this is how you'll gain your coffee in terms of uh, production chains. Now, um, chocolate factory here. Let's, as you can see, it's here. But let's let me show you quickly the actual chain. So the basic chain starts with sugarcane plantation. These sugar canes are transformed into sugar in the sugar refinery. You add some cocoa to it to make some chocolate. But as we've seen, you don't really uh, always have to, um, to follow that. For example, here, because I've put the quality chocolatier, instead of sugar, I'm processing coffee beans. So if we look into it, it's the cocoa, but then the coffee beans. And that's quite interesting because now in this island here, where I'm producing both my coffee and chocolate, as I show you, I can have a lot of coffee plantation, just a few cacao plantation, I think here that must be one. And that's enough you know, for both of these. I don't need to do at all this sugar uh, complex chain. Now, you, there's also a lot of other ways to get chocolate. Let's start with the bakery. So in the bakery, you can put two different ones. The first one is Marie Antoine. And as you can see, extra good chocolate, one out of five. And again, in your sort of mid game, early game, you may have a lot of bakeries and that could give you all of your chocolate for free with this item. The second one is the fine cake decorator. Also one for five, also for the bakery, right? So very similar. This one is just a rare versus the previous one was a legendary. That's basically the difference. Now you can also do it via the fried plantain kitchen with the master confectioner here. And as you can see, chocolate one out of three. That's also quite nice, quite often. Um, on top of that, also re replaces um, your fish oil by cacao. So if you're, you know, you have an island where you're already producing it because you're making chocolate, then you can make even more chocolate with this. And then lastly, it's in the coffee. Uh, chain and that's why again I was saying they are very interrelated with Cecilia the confectioner <laughs> um, and here it's chocolate one out of four plus also a nice productivity boost. I used it quite a lot in the past I'm not using it in this island right now I will show you very quickly why what am I using instead I am using first this item here which uh, will reduce my workforce by 50 percent plus productivity 30 and also this one for workforce 50 again so which means workforce zero percent zero right and then marco de la moca which i hope many of you know if you don't you sh please look at it <laughs> i'm showing it now you should remember this one why because it produces coffee beans one every two cycle so basically, it's sort of uh, half thing, the need of, for coffee beans. So you, you don't need a lot of these plantations, which do take a lot of space, right? To power all of your coffee roasters. So a lot of people at the beginning, when we you now start in the, doing investors, saying coffee is really hard, really taking a lot of space, it's a really big limiting factor. With mocha, it's definitely not. Uh, it's, it's game changer, I would say. 
So again, a lot of ways to um, produce both coffee and chocolate that are in interrelating, interrelated, sorry. And it's also worth noting that you can buy both of these, so the coffee and the chocolate uh, at Madame Kaina's Harbor. Let me show you that very quickly. So number one, I think she's here if I remember, yes. You can see coffee and chocolate. Now, very quickly, let's look at the basic production rates. And let's look here. So these are some of the elements. So if we look at the normal coffee, you it's one minute for the coffee beans, 30 seconds for the coffee roaster. So you actually need two coffee plantations for one roaster here. And now if we look into the chocolate, it is 30 seconds for the sugar cane, 30 seconds for the sugar. So you, sh you should have the same numbers of these, well, for example, one and one. And this one is one minute. So if you want to match to the 30 seconds, you need two of these. One there, one there. And then this one is 30 seconds. So again, link to this. So that's two, cacao, one, one, one. That's your basic production ratios. Obviously, as soon as you're going to need to add some items or just tr even just tractors, for example, right, on um, your plantations, either this one or that one, that will throw off those ratios completely. Then you you just have to think to, to use, you know, control Q to get into your production tab and match uh, things. Then, of course, you could have also elements like modify your production boosters and things like this that will... Um, change that even further. Okay, so that is the basic production ratios. Now, that leads us nicely to the layouts. And at the beginning, you'll probably want a layout without trade unions, but honestly, those are end games resources. So you will want as soon as possible to put some trade unions. But let's start without trade unions there. If you don't have trade unions, what I suggest is really to have a, what I would call an integrated um, chain, which means you don't want to put on one side of the islands your coffee plantation, then put some warehouses and put your roasters in another side of the island. Because if you do that, you're going to need uh, warehouses for the plantation and then warehouses again for the coffee roasters. So if you put them like this, what's going to happen is your coffee plantation is going to deliver directly to the coffee roaster and then the coffee roaster is going to deliver here um, to the warehouses. So you sort of have your needs for um, warehouses. And that's obviously the same for your chocolate, um, especially if you do the full chain like this. You know, you don't want to have this on one side of the island, this on the other side, this again on another side, and this again, because that's a lot of different warehouses. But since if you have a normal perfect ratio, um, this will deliver to that, this and this and this will deliver directly to this and then only the chocolate factory will deliver to the warehouse which means you need will need a lot less warehouses now if you have trade unions it's usually a lot better to f focus your trade union on one resource right so for example um, having this trade union here is focus on the coffee plantations because the items that I want to be using are very coffee plantation specific, let's say, right? For example, those two diminishing the number of modules, um, this one increasing the productivity versus the ones that you would use on, let's find, uh, that is a coffee plantation, sorry. The one you would use on the coffee, uh, coffee roasters, uh, I showed you earlier, are very, I mean, you can see in the, their titles, they only affect the coffee roasters for these two, and this one all, but um, that's sort of an exception. So you will want to specialize in trade unions. That doesn't mean you can't do some, um, still some integration. For example, here, you can see I have this um, coffee plantation, right? 
in green, you can see where it can deliver. So it can deliver, of course, to some of those uh, warehouses, but it can also deliver here to those coffee roasters or to those chocolate factories. And that way you need a bit less warehouses um, here. You can't, you know, in an island like this, you can't do it everywhere because it's also creating roads that are not um, always what you want, but you should try to do it as much as possible. Um, I wasn't able to do it that much here, but there's definitely, I've seen a lot of great um, screenshots and videos of people doing it a lot better. So do try to do that. I have put in the description below the layouts that I suggest for coffee and uh, chocolate. You can see you can fit quite a few inside one trade union here, chocolate here. It's really uh, quite optimized. So do check out those uh, links in my description below. Now, number five, let's move into the local departments. And for your classic production, right, in the old, in the new world, you actually don't have um, palaces or local departments. So there's nothing much to say. But you can, uh, remember, make coffee in the old world with your advanced coffee roasters. And there, I would likely, I would say, you definitely want the Department of Labor uh, for your 60% production boost. Either you have two choices: either the f the policy to get the fourth item, or three items plus the land reform. Um, it basically you will want the land reform if you're also making the grain on that same island, and therefore you want to this land reform to boost the grain rather than uh, boosting the coffee per se. If you don't know um, about the local department, but also why I'm saying 60% uh, productivity boost, which means you reach level 25, um, don't hesitate to check my other video, which will appear now, and it's in the description below, around uh, why and how to reach 33k attractiveness. That's quite really important if you're trying to do any min max. Okay. Now moving to the museum and other cultural sets, there's really nothing per se for the chocolate and coffee actual end of production, right? For those coffee roasters or chocolate factory. But you may do like I did here, which is to have this um, the plantation on the same island. And there you would probably want, I would say two. Um, so you have um, here, the botanical garden is Indian, which will give you plus 25% for coffee. Um, so that's quite nice. And then the second one is the yeah, origin of mankind will give you 5% productivity. It's not huge, but yeah, on a big island like this, you'll take it. You can see I've also put uh, God of the Delta, which will have my influence cost, which is quite important if you're trying to have, um, like I am in this playthrough, as little as possible of investors, but as much as possible of scholars. So, uh, because the investors are what is bringing me the influence. Now what everybody is probably waiting for is my items. And I think for the items, like we did in the previous episode, there's two elements. Either you want no workforce, which is what I'm doing here. And of course, with the no workforce, you will push um, all of your elements at 50% without no penalty. Or maybe you have a big island with a lot of workforce. Um, so you will want to go, not basically not reduce your workforce, but get the most productivity out of each building. So now let's start with the no workforce and the coffee roaster. I showed it briefly earlier, but let's just retake a look. We have Marco de la Moca, productivity plus 50, and coffee beans, one out of two cycles. That's huge. And the coffee sommelier to reduce our workforce by 50 and also get some nice productivity boost. And lastly, the loud bell to finish our, our workforce need and therefore get zero zero workforce needed. Um, so you also will add the working condition plus 50 meaning you'll get to 
230 and the workforce. Now, if you don't really care about uh, workforce, I would say you probably want, uh, let's do it here, you still want Marco because it will give you, uh, again, the huge coffee bean and I mean, 50% productivity is basically the max you can get. So that's still very good. Then the second one would be Ferras. Uh, what did I write? Sorry. Because again, 50% productivity is sort of the max you can get and lastly we mentioned her before I would suggest you put Cecilia for two reasons one 40% productivity which is one of the most you can get and second the chocolate one out of four is quite a lot um, so that will give you 240% then on the chocolate side Again, I showed it very quickly earlier, but let's retake a look. If you don't want it in the workforce, I suggest quality chocolatier um, as the first one for the replaced inputs and the coffee, which is quite huge. And then those two items will give you the zero workforce. So they're, they're not great because they don't give you productivity, but if you want zero workforce with only three items, you don't really have a choice. You can see here uh, zero workforce. Now, that will basically only give you 150 thanks to this, but also the coffee, right? On the other side, if you are uh, fine and if you have a lot of workforce, I would suggest these three. Starting again with quality chocolatier, because to replace that and get the coffee, then similarly to coffee you want Ferris for his 50% bonus which is huge and then lastly I would probably go um, but do tell me in the comments below if you don't agree with this legendary Gennaro why well he's also giving 50 which is sort of the max you can get plus those two elements the rum will be very nice either for your um, engineers, artisans, but also potentially for your scholars. And sugar you probably don't need because we have, we're using with a quality chocolatier, but that can still um, be sold or whatever if you're using uh, Docklands, for example. So here are all the um, items that I would suggest. And that concludes our episode on the coffee and chocolate production chains, um, layouts, and uh, items. Don't hesitate to share in the comments below if you have any questions, any feedback on this, um, these two elements. Also, uh, if you want me to do uh, my next video on a very specific uh, resource, don't hesitate to share it there. I'd love to hear about it um, and hope to see you next time.